All right, thanks, Vic. Um, so I'll start off with a I'll start off with a story. I'm sorry for the delays here, but uh, as as he mentioned, I'm from West Virginia, and uh, uh, something about my state. I love my home state. I'm currently living in Northern Virginia, D.C. area, but with West Virginia, one thing you got to admit about us is uh, we're really we're really well known, right? So back in 2007, I was in Amman, Jordan, okay, Jordan, and it was with a previous company, and I was doing a security assessment in, in Jordan. And I was coming down the elevator, going, going to catch my ride, I was at the hotel, and I was coming down the elevator, and there was a lounge singer there, and he had the big beard and everything, and he's playing piano, and he's playing tunes in the lounge. And uh, I'm walking out, and I'm walking down these steps and I get to the glass doors and uh, when I'm walking out, I, I hear the song, right? And if you're from West Virginia, you know what song I'm talking about, right? And even if you're not, you probably know what song I'm talking about. So here I am in, in Jordan and I'm walking out and I hear, I got my backpack, my gear, I'm ready to go and I hear, almost heaven. And I was like, did he just, you know, Jordan, really? And I'm walking out and I hear, Almost heaven, West Virginia, and I was like, "Oh man, that's that's my state, that's my state." So I go back, and uh, he's playing the piano, and I'm like, "That's me, that's where I'm from, West Virginia, West Virginia." <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> anyway, he thought I was a freak, but uh, as Vic said, uh, that's where I'm from, and I saw an ad for Carolina Con um, back in 2005, and I saw an ad on Security Focus website. And I thought, you know, what the heck? Uh, I'm kind of in, getting into security stuff. I was going to school uh, on the GI Bill, and I was working part time at a computer store, and I was learning Snort. And uh, I was like, yeah, this is a this is a cool tool. I'd like to see, you know, if these guys can tell me about it. So I drive all the way down, um, <clears throat> and it was great. Like there were uh, all kinds of talks that were just really inspiring, and I had all these ideas and all these thoughts of this different stuff that I wanted to do and the stuff I wanted to go try. And uh, I remember, I'll never forget something that Al Stroger said to me on that, that first time I was there. And uh, <laughs> actually, actually, I'll rephrase that. Al, Al said a lot of things to me but uh, <laughs> that first time, but I'll, I'll never forget this thing, right? So I was like, it was the last day and I was like, yeah, this is awesome, like I learned all this stuff, I, I got all these ideas, uh, you know, there's nothing like this in West Virginia. And he said, start one, build it, you know, take it back with you. So uh, Carolina Con, like Vic said, I've been to every one since the first one. Uh, it's it's uh, just an awesome conference. I love coming down here. I'd just like to give a round of applause to the staff and everyone who puts it on. If uh, we could give them another <laughs> thanks. All right, and uh, with the video issues and stuff like that, feel free to move up to the front or the front row or if we want to make a little semicircle here, you know, so you can actually see it, that'd be great. But anyway, I'll go ahead and uh, get started. <clears throat> About me, my name is John DeGroyter. Uh, my handle is Debug. I have a, a company called the Zerg with uh, um, Trey and some other folks uh, ran Capture the Flag here the last four years. I was a Marine Corps veteran. I am a Marine Corps veteran, so I got the start of my technical career in the California deserts with a laptop in one hand and my M16 in the other, setting up Cisco routers and switches. And um, since then, it's been about two decades where I've been in the tech field, uh, kind of working on various things. Uh, I was also an adjunct professor at George Washington University where I um, taught computer network defense, and it was basically we would do hacking offensive techniques, and then we, now that, since the students had an understanding of it, we'd show them how to defend against it, and uh, that was a lot of fun. So I wrote a course for that and did that for three years. So this talk, this talk is for system administrators, malware analysts, reverse engineers, developers, uh, and people who like to know what's going on under the hood, which includes myself. And what I'm gonna be talking about is a, a tool, right? And tools are nice, but uh, they, they kind of take away from us knowing how, how it works uh, <clears throat> on the inside, but it's a trade-off, right? You can't, you can't do everything from the command line, although uh, you wish you could. 
so this is a, a graphical, graphical tool that I'm going to present to you. Uh, if, it's, uh, if it's something worth, worth uh, adapting and having in your toolkit, that's for you to decide. And fair enough. All right. So part one, we're going to talk about Windows Performance Toolkit. Um, monitoring tools that produce in-depth performance profiles of Windows operating system and applications. Basically, this is going to detect what's going on. Uh, you, it's, there's uh, three different parts to it. Uh, one, you're going to specify the different events that you're interested in. Uh, then it's going to start a recorder that listens in the background for those events. And then it's going to log that inf event information as it occurs. So some things to know. Uh, Performance Toolkit is based on ETW, which is Event Tracing for Windows. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this later. And uh, has anyone used XPerf? OK, cool. Uh, it's, it's basically a, a graphical user, uh, user interface for XPerf. You can do more with XPerf, but it's kind of a, a complicated interface. But um, So setting it up, you set it up with the Windows SDK or the ADK, which is the software development kit or the assessment deployment kit, I believe. Uh, and it's not on by default, so make sure you, you uh, check the box with that. And there's two parts to it. Uh, there's the recorder that we'll look at, and there's also an analyzer. <coughs> and this is just a screenshot of the recorder, but basically you select from various pre-configured profiles that are going to listen for different things on, on your system. So here I have a <coughs> first level triage, which is the default, and this will record uh, a bunch of stuff, and it's it's, it's a good, good baseline, uh, but I also selected on this, I selected file I.O. activity and registry I.O. activity. So it's going to record any writes to the file system, and it's going to record any writes uh, to the registry. And this is it as it's running. I, I just had this screenshot as well because uh, in the upper right corner, it shows you a memory usage indicator. So here it's using 5% of memory, which you know, isn't a whole lot. And uh, also, there's a, there's a hotkey, uh, Control Windows C, to, to stop it. So, <clears throat> yeah, let's move on. All right, getting to the videos. Uh, again, this is going to be uh, pretty hard to see, but we're going we're gonna to try it here. OK, so basically, I'm going to open up a recording that's already been done. And this interface is a little bit busy, uh, but once you get used to it, it's, it's pretty useful as well. On the left, uh, there's different graphs that you can use. And on the right side, there's different tabs that you can use. And basically, what you do is you pull the different graphs into the tabs. And you can create new ones, which gives you a nice, clean uh, interface uh, to work with. And here, I'm just going to grab the uh, processes graphs. So it's a graph and an adjacent table. And when I see, say graph, it's, it's basically like a, a timeline that goes across the top. And you can select uh, different processes that were running, and it'll highlight, it'll highlight the area that that process was running. So here I selected Notepad++, and I also select Notepad uh, here. So during this time uh, of the shaded area, that's when Notepad was running. So it's pretty cool to. Uh, cool way to get an idea of what, what the processes look like. You can also do this with threads, and you can drill down into a lot of detail. Um, you can also select whether or not you want to see just the table or just the graph or the table and the graph. So <clears throat> for an example, we're going to look at uh, some file I.O. So there's a particular file on the system, and I want to know what wrote to that file. So I'm adding a different view. This is a graph view. It's, I'm looking at different file I.O. by process. And in this example, I know that the file was written to by a notepad. And right here, I'm going to take out some columns that I don't need to see. So I'm just kind of shrinking it up a little bit. And uh, I'm going to go to the notepad process. And another cool thing you can do is you can right click, and you can filter to that process. So 
filter to selection, and now it just shows notepad.exe. And this is all the file I.O. that happened uh, with Notepad. And um, <coughs> you can see in the top in the, in the timeline, all of that corresponds with, uh, <coughs> with when that Notepad process was running. So I click Write, and it shows that I, I did a write, and it, it gives you an indicator of when that actual write was on the timeline. Um, And over here, it shows the file name. So it shows hello w.txt. So I know what file I wrote to. And it shows the size. So it shows 12 bytes. So that's the length of hello world. So I wrote, um, this tells me I wrote to that file with the notepad process. All right, so, so next, I want to see uh, all the different writes to the system, everything that happened. So I'm going to go to a different view, and I'm going to look at uh, file I.O. based on the type of event. <clears throat> I'm just going to expand that down, and if I, uh, if I click on write, uh, you see highlighted at the top, those are all the different writes that happened on the system um, during the length of this trace that I recorded. And filter to selection. so. Here I'm looking at just the writes, uh, none of the other event types. And it gives you a lot of information in the table. Again, I'm going to take out a few different columns. All right, and then you can search, which is nice. So you can do a right click and find in column. So I'm going to look for that particular file. So I'm going to search for hello w.txt. And uh, when I find that, I'm going to I'm going to uh, sort, uh, sort it so that all those writes to that particular file are together. And here I see notepad.exe and where I wrote to it with 12 bytes and it shows me on the timeline where that is. And then also uh, below that I see notepad++.exe uh, and I see the size is 35. So what happens? And you see the, the timeline indicators further, further to the right. So what happens was I uh, opened that file up and wrote to it with a different process. And I can, that's all shown here in the graph. So there's a, another circumstance. What if there's a, a file and you don't know how it got there or how it got created? Uh, what you can do is search for all the creates that happened during that trace. So I'm just going to do filter to selection and uh, look at everything that was created during the trace. Again, I'm going to search. And I'm going to search for a file called howdy.mht. Now this shows me that file that I was looking for, because I want to know what process created it. And if I scroll to the left, I see iExplorer.exe. So I know that this file was created by Internet Explorer. And say I wanted to know everything that the Internet Explorer uh, wrote to, uh, I can do that. I can just switch back over to the, the tab where it created, um, created the different, um, has the file I.O. by process and I can filter to that particular process. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to iExplorer, and I'm going to filter on that. Now this gives me all the, uh, all the different file I.O. Um, for iExplorer, and I can go to write, and I can see everything that it wrote to. I see my files down there, and, uh, and the temp folders, and a few other things, a log file and MFT as well. <clears throat> okay, so that's just an example how, how you use uh, the application. Are there any questions on that? I know it's hard to see. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about event tracing for Windows. Uh, <clears throat> It's a kernel-level tracing facility that lets you log kernel or application-defined events to a log file. So this is the underlying feature in Windows that allows uh, the performance toolkit to run. 
Uh, other programs use this, other programs like Procmon, if you've ever used Procmon. Um, the underlying, it's using event tracing for Windows. And this is kind of a, a diagram of what that looks like. Uh, so there's controllers, and the controllers basically control uh, what the uh, providers do. And the providers in the bottom left, the providers are, are listening for the different events and then writing that to a buffer. So, so the uh, controller would be the Windows Performance Recorder that we used at the beginning, that interface where we selected uh, which profiles we wanted to use and we told it to start and stop and all that. The providers uh, were part of, when we selected the profiles, the providers were the underlying uh, listeners that it selected. And uh, when we used the Performance Analyzer, the, the graphical interface, that was the consumer. And basically what that was doing was um, giving us a view of the different logs and buffers uh, as they were occurring. So, so those are the, the, the different parts. Uh, you can log um, to a buffer and then you can save that buffer to a file. Uh, there's different settings that you can do that uh, with the performance toolkit. So a, a cool thing is that you can write uh, custom providers. And <clears throat> how to do that is beyond the scope of this talk, but uh, there's an awesome blog uh, by Bruce Dawson. Uh, it's random ASCII. Um, <clears throat> tons of articles on Windows Performance Toolkit. I, anytime I searched for it, it came up. Uh, this guy's blog was uh, uh, the first hit, and the second hit was Microsoft. So <clears throat> there's, he also has uh, three really good videos. And the first video is kind of a, a walkthrough of the toolkit and how he um, troubleshoots an issue, and he really drills down and does a good job of it, explaining it in detail, so I highly recommend that. Uh, the, the videos are on WinSelect now, so that's a paid service, but if you sign up for Visual Studio Dev Essentials, you get a free trial of WinSelect Win now, so, um, so that's a good way to, to, get, um, to get access to these videos. And the, the second video of his three video series, he, he walks you through creating a custom event um, provider. He also wrote a user interface. So this is UI for ETW, and it's kind of like the Windows perform Performance uh, Recorder, but there's, there's a little bit more uh, features uh, that you can do with it. And also it, it has by default his, um, his custom providers that he wrote. Uh, they're, they're already associated with this. <clears throat> so back to the video. And this is just a video of using his user interface. Uh, there's a drop down. Uh, I forgot to mention, one of the custom providers he wrote was for input. So anytime a, a mouse uh, gets clicked, uh, it'll record that event, and also keyboard. Anytime uh, a key gets pressed, he'll record that event, which is pretty cool. So uh, the dropdown for input tracing, uh, I changed that from private to full. Uh, with private, anytime you hit a key, it'll just record an A. Um, it'll record an A for any key you hit on the keyboard. Uh, when you hit full, it'll, it'll record all the different keys. And that's, you know, if you're doing uh, tracing for someone else to try to troubleshoot an issue or, or something like that. Uh, so I just hit uh, trace, start tracing on the recorder, and I'm going to switch between a couple of different applications. Uh, so I'm going to type, type a few things in WordPad, and then I'm going to switch to Calc, and then I'm going to switch to Word and type a few more, um, few more characters. And that's it, it's pretty, pretty basic. I'm gonna save that trace to a buffer. And um, down here you can write some info, info about your trace if you know, you're troubleshooting a certain issue. And when you double click uh, down here, it will open up in Windows Performance Analyzer automatically, which is nice. And here I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do two different views. Uh, I'm gonna look at uh, the different windows that were in focus, which were um, just three windows. I had WordPad, Calc, and uh, Word. Uh, so <clears throat> this timeline just kind of just shows that. 
And uh, he has uh, one of his custom providers is down uh, that I'm going to pull over. It's um, random ASCII multi-event. So I'm going to drag that graph over as well. And I'm not really interested in seeing the graph for that. I I'm more interested in the table. So I'm going to show table only for that. And at the top, the windows in focus, I'm interested in uh, just the, the window, just the graph for that. I'm not interested in the table, so I'm going to take that out. And here I'm selecting his custom provider, which is multi-input. And we'll take a look first at the mouse clicks. So if I click on mouse down, it shows me every time the mouse was clicked. And this makes sense, right? Because this is when I was clicking, uh, when I was switching between the different windows. And again, when you select the individual items in the table, it reflects it up on the timeline. Next, we'll go to the keyboard. So key down, uh, once I select this, it shows all the key down uh, events. So you can see it basically when I was in WordPad, uh, I was typing, so you see key down events for there. And then also you see it in Word kind of toward the end, that process at the end. And uh, when you drop down and look at the table, you see, uh, you can see the actual keys. Uh, so over here, it's showing, it's showing the actual text uh, that I typed in. Okay, I also wanted to mention a, a strange issue that I had, and I was troubleshooting. Uh, in the Windows Performance Recorder, it has Network I.O. listed as one of the profiles, and I was clicking that, and uh, I wasn't seeing anything in uh, WPA, in the Performance Analyzer, and uh, you know, I, I didn't know if it was because I was working in a VM or, or, or what the problem was if I wasn't recording it. Uh, but I posted a, a question on uh, Random ASCII on the blog and <clears throat> asked him, and I got a really, really quick response. Uh, he said, I, he suggested I go to trace system configuration, uh, trace statistics, and um, from within there, it shows me information about the trace that I just recorded. And from there, it showed me the different providers that I used. And I could see that, in fact, it, did, it was recording uh, the network events. And the issue was, basically, it just wasn't showing it in Windows Performance Analyzer. So, so um, one of the things you can do, I wanted to verify that the actual data was there. I saw that it recorded it with a provider. So I used xperf and the dot I, dash I for the input file. So I looked at my trace in dash O, and it saved it to a, a CSV file. And looking in that CSV file, I went through and I verified that um, <clears throat> the different network traffic was there. So I saw TCP connections, uh, I saw the inbound and outbound IP, and the um, source and destination port as well. So, so it was actually there. All right, I have uh, one more video. Okay, so this last video, I'm interested in heap allocations. So I'm gonna pull the graph over and stretch this down again. So this shows uh, all of the different heap allocations that were done uh, during this time. And it also shows the, the size of the allocations. One of the really cool things about this tool is you can do stack traces. So if I wanted to know when that allocation occurred, I can hit the drop down and get a stack trace from that. Now, you see question marks here because I don't have symbols loaded. But if I uh, go up to the top uh, and go to trace, load symbols, it's going to load all the symbol information. You might not have symbols for every application you look at, but uh, a lot of the Microsoft um, products will will give you symbols. Emoji. 
All right, so uh, going here with the drop down, I, I can see uh, the different functions that uh, Windows called all the way down to RTL allocate heap. And that's pretty cool if you're looking for maybe like a particular size heap allocation or, or something along those lines. <clears throat> And uh, the next thing it shows, I'm going to show is the low fragmentation heap. It shows you the different bucket that it uses and the different block sizes. And again, I'm going to drop this down. And here I can see the different allocations for the low al allocation heap. And another feature that's pretty cool is you can highlight uh, anywhere up on the timeline and right click and do zoom. And basically, It'll, it'll zoom in, but it'll also um, take out anything in the table that's not listed within that timeline. And here, uh, again, it's hard to read, but you can see that the, since we're using the low fragmentation heap, these allocations are adjacent uh, to each other. Um, and that can be useful for things like writing uh, a use after free exploit. Uh, this, this file, heapalloc4.exe, was from uh, Coreland Coder's class. He does an advanced exploit development class. It's a great class, highly recommend it. I took it this past fall. Um, really good stuff. So if you get a chance, Coreland Coder's stuff is really great. All right. Uh, so that's it for the heap stuff. And, and that's it. I'm done a little early. Any questions out there? Yes. Spawn processes. Uh, I believe it does show you the, the parent ID. Um, I'd have to go back and check it, but I believe it does show that. Um, yeah, good question. Anything else? Yeah. Would you disable event viewer? Um, it, it depends on when you want to do this trace. Like, so I would say not because event viewer is capturing all those, that logs and saving it to disk from a whole bunch of different stuff that's going on. Uh, with this, um, kind of the idea for this is if you're having a problem on your system, you could start up this, um, this tool, right, the performance toolkit, and see if uh, something, see if you can identify what's going on, whereas Event Viewer is kind of running all the time. Uh, the guy, Bruce Dawson, he, he runs this in the background. It's running, it's using 5% of memory, so he just keeps it running and uh, hits the hotkey. He um, you know, works a lot with performance, and that's important to him, so uh, he just leaves it running in the background. So I would say no it wouldn't replace event viewer. Um, some other things this tool is good for is uh, maybe you're doing an install and you want to see all the registry writes uh, that get written to disk. There's some tools that do it like RedShot. Uh, you want to see all the files that get written to disk. There's tools like what, sh what changed and other tools like that. Um, but this can do it for you and put it in kind of like a graphical interface. Another thing, I don't do malware analysis, but I think it would be useful for that. Um, like I said, processes getting spawned or uh, network connections or things like that um, that are going on behind the scenes, that would be, be nice to know. So the idea would be that you would start this up, open your malware sample, and, and get an idea of kind of what all it's doing. You can filter to that process. And um, yeah. any, other, any other questions? Yeah. Uh, yes, it's administrative. Oh, that's a good question. Yes, you can copy the recorder. It gives you uh, installation files that you can give to someone and say, "Here, record this, and you know, send it to me, and I'll, you know, take a look at what's going on." Anything else? All right. Thank you.